Hi everyone, welcome to the Lame Book Club podcast. I'm Ellie. And I'm Melissa. And this week we are changing it up from Akatar to, oh, to Fourth Wing. <laughs> um we're super excited to talk yeah. about Fourth Wing. I actually I know we talked about this last week. We've talked about it a bunch. We keep going back. We kept annou- like announcing what we were doing before and then changing our minds, which Again. is Apologies. Sorry, not sorry. Honestly, it's probably not going to change either. That's just like yeah. who we are. <laughs> but um, we're going to keep you on your toes is what that, we're going to do. <laughs> that's yes. If you need people like that in your life, we're your girls. <laughs> no, uh, I'm so glad, though, that we pivoted back to fourth wing yeah. because I think I mean, Carval's great. I hadn't I hadn't finished it, but what I had read was interesting and I liked it. Mm-hmm. But I I think this is like one of the only books that would have made me as excited to do something else. Yeah. And not just so sad to be the done. Hangover. hangover. Yes, mm-hmm. 100%. And I'm I had like a new hangover even from just like talking about them like all over yeah. again. It's like a different kind of hangover cuz like now I'm processing. I know. Everything more I guess more than I did yeah. reading it. Um so now I'm excited to have a fourth wing hangover. <laughs> it's going to be good. Empyrean so, series hangover. We both finished this book within three to four days. Yes. Um, and we are hoping to finish Iron Flame before. We have time. We have yeah. a, a while to so do that. So hopefully but after these two episodes of fourth wing, immediately into Iron Flame. If yes. not, you'll just no know way. that we just couldn't. There's no way because. There's a way. Sometimes we I have get way tired more time. <laughs> Yeah, but we have way more time to finish this book we'll than we did with Fourth Wing. I will try my best. It's Ellie, That's guys. It's not me. <laughs> it's not me. It's Ellie. <laughs> okay. So, uh, opening question. You ready? I'm so ready. Okay. If we had to switch lives for one day, what would you be the most and least excited to do as yours truly? I, like, instantly, I know exactly. Okay. I would be the most excited to be a beekeeper with your bees that's it yes that's i don't know why everyone thinks that like that's the coolest thing about me i'm so (laughs) (laughs) well-rounded why wow and you're so (laughs) humble so humble (laughs) so beautiful so humble (laughs) but like they're okay they're fun they're like they're cool bees are i think i should talk about bees forever but it's like at the same time they're just bugs it's so different though like, the only time I I'm guess. around bees is if, like, someone's scared that it's, they're going to get stung. To, I think, truthfully, I think the thing I'm, the reason I would be the most yeah. excited about it is because for the outfit. I just want to <laughs> be in the beekeeper costume. <laughs> well, come to my house. I'll take you out there for sure. But it's just, like, anyway, it's just different. Everyone, it seems cool. all of a sudden, like, I told, like, I posted something about, oh, I do beekeeping. That became my identity. Everybody's like, the beekeeper. <laughs> Ellie. <laughs> no. I just started doing this thing, and now everyone's like, oh, Ellie, you're so cool. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Ellie, over here. <laughs> <laughs> Ellie, over here. <laughs> Anyways, I'm adding to that. I think it's an awesome, and that's what I would want to do. <laughs> and I also know the absolute <laughs> thing I would be the least excited about or thing I would not want to do is your job. Accounting. My job no, is thank you. exhilarating. Yeah, numbers. Numbers all day. What are you wow. talking about? It's a that's blast. A, it's a no for me, dog. So <laughs> okay, that's fair. What um, about what about for me? <laughs> for you, immediately, Melissa's kids are my favorite little people in the entire world. I would most be excited to just they're my kids now. Yep. Thank you. Um, least excited, probably fixing up the baseboards in your house. Yep, that's, that's true. That's <laughs> that's that does why. not sound like a job that I'd want to do that's why they're also not done yet because i keep putting them off um <laughs> diy queen i'm, I'm like 80 percent it's impressive queen. no 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 like we'll we'll are you let me? me compliment you okay you you are also though you and grant do that all the time thanks uh <laughs> we're woodworkers which i think is more impressive than the bees but nobody wants to care about that <laughs> i'm not changing my answer <laughs> all right i just yeah, I like I'll start a project and get like eighty percent of the way done and then lose steam and then it takes me forever to finish. <laughs> Isn't that how we all are though? Yeah. A very rare few of us have the hundred. You know who's 10%. not like that? Who? Violet. Let's talk about fourth wing. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, do you like what I did there? I did like that. All That's right, really so this good. episode, part one of Fourth Wing, chapters Cap- one through twenty. Yep. Um 
and we're just going to dive right in. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. It's conscription day Yikes. in Navarre. Start over. What? It's conscrip- conscription. <laughs> Ellie, you're making me mess up. Uh, it's conscription day in Navarre. <laughs> and right from the get-go, Violet's mom seems like a piece of work. So what did you think of her mom, General Sorengale, her sister Mira, mm-hmm. and Violet from, like, just the first three from pages? From just the beginning? Yeah. Um, I... I like an underdog story, but I don't like the underdog from the beginning. Like I want, hmm. but I, I wouldn't be no, as. They in- wouldn't be an underdog though. Exactly, if they I wouldn't be as interested if they were like from the get go. I am the most powerful. I am whatever. Like all right, but I also don't like when someone's like, I'm so weak. I shouldn't be here. I, I don't like get- the beginning of any stories. Let's start there. <laughs> I didn't get the vibe that she was so weak. I got the vibe that she was like, I'm just not, I'm not prepared she's for this. She's made different. Yeah. Yeah. But so that's obviously a common theme throughout the book is she's just so different than her family. And she says it from the get go that different. I'm like, yeah, I'm different. Hmm, okay. <laughs> but I did like Violet. I connected with her from the beginning. I thought she was personable. Yeah. I liked, I loved how, how much Mira cared in the yeah. light of how much the mom didn't care. That's what I was going to say. Because it's so dangerous. Violet could get killed. They say it over and over. And the mom was like, I don't care. Yeah. You are going. Oh, I know. Well, so like, I know I've <laughs> talked about this a lot throughout our Akatar series, but I just love reading about strong women. Mm-hmm. And so, and right off the bat, I didn't not like Violet by any means. I just was like, oh, I wish this was from Mira's point of view. <laughs> like, I just, I... <laughs> I loved how yeah, I, the mom, oh my word, like yeah, not a there, motherly I just, figure. There is no other word. She was a bitch. Yeah, there was no there's no other word I'll to accurately <laughs> describe like how she acted. I I could never, especially having two girls, like I could never imagine any situation mm-hmm. where I would put my well. I, I like their how the presentation of my family or like what like r- tradition or anything sure over their well-being yeah like I just no or even honestly like their interests Oop. like yeah I don't know so that was I was like I hate this I hate her yeah. <laughs> right, right off the bat you know but from the beginning like she was hard she's yeah. a hard person but I didn't hate her from the beginning I just kind of assumed like that's their family dynamic as I went through the book I'm like oh she is horrible but from the beginning i was i didn't i was just like ouch yeah like kind of from the beginning you're right i there wasn't enough book for me to hate her but i just did not connect yeah which i but mira i don't think you're supposed to i loved mira's how protective she was protective she tried to get her out she Mm -hmm. was very like sisterly like just she cared a lot and i liked that yeah them characters um people yeah. So then, and then we learn more about how their mom is the general of the war college, mm-hmm. Bezgayeth. Bezgayeth. Bez, is that what I said? Yeah. Okay. I'm just saying it too. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were correcting me. I'm because no. I'm just so bad. This this book is gonna kill me. We practiced beforehand. We did practice, and I'm still probably gonna not. I'm probably gonna say some of them wrong still. It's okay. You um, did, uh, didn't you do the audiobook? I did listen to parts of it on audiobook so which helped have a grasp on the names better you'd than think me. you'd think <laughs> <laughs> um no yeah i i should but okay. we learned that violet had been there's four quadrants in mm-hmm. the college healers scribes infantry and writers and she had been training so, her whole life to be a scribe yes i knew healers scribes and writers infantry Could not ever remember the fourth one because well, i've been they like to tell people about this are book, hardly like, even brought up one. throughout the entire book yeah. though so i mean I honestly, I mean, they might come out later. I mean, we know as of right now, there's at least five books planned for the series. Um, and side note, I'm also really hoping that um, Rebecca Yaros did us all a favor and wrote all five of them before because... <gasps> Another Throne of Glass situation. Or not Throne of Glass, uh, Game of Thrones situation. Well, I just like, it's only been six months since... Yeah. Um, fourth wing was released and then six iron flame i'm hoping like every six months we get a new one and it's not oh. like we have to wait years that that's what I, my thought process is i i don't know i thought you meant for the tv adaptation because how game of thrones no. wasn't finished by the time they finished a the show so then the show was like bonkers at the end and it didn't do the 
books justice that they might well they made up similar. the last season that's why exactly they ran out of book. book so <laughs> then i'm i was concerned that you were that they would do the same thing the books aren't written so they're just going to make up their own thing in the end oh, 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 oh. Mm-hmm. no no i will i don't like the books were done with game of thrones that's why they yeah. just added more to oh, it oh yeah i did not realize right zeke they're not making they're not writing another game of thrones book I redact my statement. Um, apparently, there's a couple that still are, need to be released or written. Who's to say? Who's to say? <laughs> well, whatever. That HBO did it justice until the last season when they went rogue. Yeah. Um, no, that's not what I said. I was just saying, like, I hope we don't have to wait too long. Yeah. Because, like, it's been real nice. I mean, we waited to read it, but I can only imagine how nice it's been for yeah. the fandom to not have to wait too long for Iron Flame. I hate getting in like hopping on a train last like for hunger games back in those days i was in line at the bookstore for catching fire i remember being so amped for all yeah. these books to come out i was like so late to the game with akatar mm-hmm. all of them well not the i was even one, later than you <laughs> yeah most of, most all of them are written all the stories are pretty much complete that really leave you on the cliffhangers so i didn't i wasn't worried uh throne of glass same thing all of them are written so yeah i didn't have to wait for anything this is going to be a new. Well, we have to wait for the for next Akatar book, though. Still, yeah, but like, but that wasn't initially announced. Yeah. yeah, no, I get it. I don't know. I I'm just really hoping that. So maybe the infantry becomes a bigger mm-hmm. part of it later on, or I honestly wouldn't be surprised too if it's just like a setting the scene, like kind of trying to understand. Mm-hmm. Um, because, I mean, we really they have to come in later because we, even in this book, like we hear about. We even interact with different scribes that are in the scribe quadrant and obviously healers and stuff, which we will touch on in a second um, and everything. But we you're like other than them mentioning mm-hmm. the fact that the infantry gets to like camp out at one point, like we really don't even like hear anything about them. Yeah. So I'm curious if they'll make a bigger. I or doubt come. it. The direction the book's going now. But oh, I, <laughs> that's I, neither here nor there yeah. at the moment. Um, Anyways, so there's they're at the the Basgaith, Basgaith, yeah. and they or her, her mom forces her to yeah. change to six months to train to not die yeah. as a writer, become a candidate to be a writer or a cadet, sorry, cadet. Mm-hmm. as a writer when everyone else has been training like practically their yeah. whole lives. What her sister had started training when she was like eight or something. Yeah, and her brother. Early Same with her brother. Too. So her brother, though, in the first conversation, we find out that the brother died yeah. in battle. It wasn't the first, but it was really early. Yeah. So already the mom's lost one kid, and it shocks me that she's like, another one, go Oh, in. you're right. It was ah. the first conversation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's like, I'm willing to sacrifice another kid yeah. or something. <laughs> which, and again, the fact that the mom didn't even react to that. Didn't even blink an To eye. me, which, I mean, could have been self-preservation, but I'm not going to give her the benefit of the doubt. Mm-hmm. Um guy they violet does talk about how like hard that was on her yeah. mom and that also was when her dad had died a few years ago and that was the first time he started having heart pains was when brennan the brother died mm-hmm. um and then a, a couple years later he just couldn't take it anymore but yeah. yeah anyways i don't know um and so she was like super not prepared she's physically a lot smaller mm-hmm. than um everyone else i'm not gonna lie i don't know if i like wasn't paying a ton of attention or if it was anyone else but i had a hard time picturing her hair when they said like it like faded into silver um and i didn't want to at this point it was so early in the book i didn't want to look up any fan art because Mm -hmm. i didn't want to ruin it for myself i still and i still haven't looked up fan art but i had a hard time picturing how that would look in my head it's like brown 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 and like a cut off silver purple nah <laughs> i very much picture an ombre especially because she said no matter how short i cut it it's exactly. still gonna do that which is another reason why i pictured a hard line yeah because okay. it's like doesn't matter but no i i pictured an ombre um did you get hogwarts vibes after absolutely when you talk about the four the quadrants and everything yeah it was like the four houses i'm a little map nerd so i True. like read it Flip back to the, the map, map see exactly. how accurate we are, read a little more, flip back. Yeah. Loved it. Yeah. I was, well, so I, because of how, there were some things for me just because of like being on social media and everything that were somewhat ruined mm-hmm. for this. 
Um, so I kind of knew just with how much everyone loved Akatar and then loved this, I knew there were going to be some similarities mm -hmm. and crossover a little bit. Um, so then when the whole like Hogwarts vibe kind of was introduced, I was, I knew there was dragons and everything. I was like, I'm really curious to see how dragons and Hogwarts and Akatar yeah. are all involved I in this. loved the begin. The Me too. I, I really liked the like war setting. I do too. But more than like just the overall, I just loved how honed in they were with the training. Yes. And like here's the. It honestly kind of reminded me of Divergent. Yeah. A little bit. Um, Divergent it makes me cringe so much. That's one of my <laughs> most hated book series of all times. I didn't read the series. I just watched the movies. It's. I just. Mm -mm. I, I like Shailene Woodley in some things, but I think that that was like not the right move. I like zero things. No, I liked her in uh, Big Little Lies. Watch. Yeah. That one I yeah. liked. Fault in Our Stars. Not good. Goodbye. Yeah. Divergent. Goodbye. <laughs> so bad. Um, but in the, in the movies when they're like running everywhere. Are you kidding me? I know. Anyways. I, I But like the the training part. It also kind of, kind of a little mm -hmm. bit Hunger Games. Kind of like just like the training. Very Hunger Games. Yeah. And stuff. And like I love those kind of worlds. Yeah. And I also loved that there wasn't a ton of world building we just like kind of went into I the story that the other day i was like i love that they are building the world you, as you read. exactly and that's like my favorite way to read a book because yeah. like i love i well up until the fourth book i really liked the F for blood and ash series mm -hmm. uh from blood and ash my bad but like um the, i was it took me about 75% of the way through the first book to like really get invested in it because mm. there was so much world building in the beginning and I, I was exactly. so confused. Get me into the book and then let's build the world. Yeah. Well, to but be fair, like yeah. there was like, she added like JLA did a lot in that book. Like mm -hmm. I sh could she have, I'm not a writer, so I'm not going to, the books are great. Yeah. Like the story, the world she built is cred incredible. I'm not going to say I could have done it better. I just, I wonder if she had taken the approach that Rebecca Yaros did with these books and just kind of just like went into the story because things do fall into place. Like mm -hmm. as you're explaining them, I wonder if it would have been a little bit easier to get into mm -hmm. it. But um, yeah, I loved this. I love that it was just like, yeah, this is Bezgaia. These are the quadrants. This is what we do. And here's Violet. Let's learn about her. And like, I love certain goals, like set goals. Yeah. So first thing, parapet second yep. thing you know and then they have thresh all this they're the very gauntlet. set then yeah, like there's this challenge and then you that do they this need to accomplish yeah it's yeah. not like we need to win the war some way somehow which love throne of glass but that it was a too vague of a goal mm. and like oh i'm gonna go tail this guy to find out and it's like th that could go any which way i love that there was this is what we're doing this is this is how we're getting there you know i mean it Ugh. felt it was very military which is exactly I like it's a like a good or i like order which um, I don't know if you know this or not. Rebecca Yaros, her husband, was in the military. Yeah, so I'm I'm guarantee you that influenced For sure. this. Yeah. But But yeah, I really liked Biscayeth. I liked how they built it. Me too. It was awesome. I very much pictured like a Hogwarts castle. Did you? Yeah. I actually didn't. In my head. But really. I was looking at the map, so I'm just kind of picturing a, well, like, like I, I looked at the map to get a sense of like where things were, but Hogwarts that's is so did, castly. This was to me was not castly. To me, this was like it was storming twenty four seven in my mind. There were broken hole, like there were. Oh, well, Bezgaith is probably pristine, but I also pictured parts of it being like Decrepit. ruined a little yeah. bit, um, hmm. just from like the dragons themselves. Well, I don't know. Um, okay. So then, as, as they go back, uh, the mom's like, "Nope, she's doing it. Like, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. She's I don't. She's had six months. She's." She's got to make it. She's a soaring gale. Yeah. We're all riders, except for the dad and Violet. But, um, and then they get there and they go, her pack is so heavy. She can barely carry it. Yeah. And Mira's like, okay, let's, let's get this under yeah. control. Then when they get to, she drops her off to go do the first, not, I mean, it's kind of a challenge, but it's also not really. It's like, you just have to, if you can't even make it across here, you don't even deserve Ugh, to be in. It stresses me out. I know. But the it parapet. It stressed me out. Um, I loved it, though. I loved how cutthroat. Like. Yes. I, I, it's it, like literally like. I hate to do it. But you I, make it or you die. Compare Akatar and this side by side throughout yeah. the entire story. I think everybody is doing it at this point. But Farah like really 
could not handle loss and death and like things like that like she that was i mean violet had a hard time with it too she did but also violet understood like this is what it is like we're going and so when people are dying around her she just had to keep going and she you know she got woozy or whatever but then we're moving on favorite took like 10 chapters to mourn and i didn't love reading I f- I, well, all the morning. I feel like the Feyre and Violet both <laughs> handled it the same way. I just think Violet, the story didn't allow for her Violet to... Violet had to keep going, yeah. Yeah, like, Rebecca didn't write her mourning into... The, like, she would have died if she yeah. wasn't paying attention and stuff. So, like, she was sad for a little bit, but then yeah. someone helped her out of it or someone was like, get over it. Yeah, like, or there was just honestly more pressing matters at stake where... It was literally sad, life or death. But everybody around, I mean, it was like 60% of their graduating class was going to die before they made it to graduation. I think they said a quarter of them would become writers. Yeah. So not less than so that. 75%. Yeah. Yeah. Or more, I guess. Yeah. But, um, so, yeah. so anyways, and then the last piece of advice she gives Violet before she walks across is to find Dane. Yeah. Dane Atos. Stay away from And stay away Zayden from Zayden Ryerson. Ryerson. <laughs> and, okay, this part, I mean, I just because of being on TikTok and Instagram and stuff, I knew. And honestly, I even if I hadn't, even if I had not have had been, because of Akatar, You're so, I'm yeah. so skeptical right off the bat. I'm like, okay, so Zayden's the love interest in this book. Immediately knew. Immediately. I didn't know. I was like, whatever about Dane. Who cares about Dane? Well, and she, the first thing she says when she sees Zayden for the first time, she's like, he's the most beautiful. beautiful, Just like with Farrah and Reese. Yeah. Like the, essentially the most beautiful man I've ever seen. Yeah. So I was like, well, there we have it, Except I will say you ruined this for me. (laughs) Yes. Let me, because when we talk we we hadn't finished or we hadn't even started reading the book when we posted that reel about talking about how fourth wing the rights were purchased by amazon and michael b jordan studios (laughs) and you (laughs) commented on the fact that michael b jordan was going to cast himself as zayden because in outlier society his production he is the star of most of their movies so i don't care Character descriptions be damned. I don't care what the book, how the book described him. The entire book, I was picturing Michael B. Jordan so sorry. as Zayden. That which, might make the TV show easier for you, though. Also, though, it, I mean, it wasn't a, it wasn't a bad thing. It's yeah. just any like fan art I see, I'm like, who's that? And then I'll read it and be like Zayden. I'm like, ah, that's not how I pictured oh, Zayden. Sorry, <laughs> but well. I actually, actually though, yeah, I think if Michael B. Jordan decides to do that. He's a good-looking guy. He's good, but he would. I think he would play the character well. He does a. I'm, We're not rooting for Michael B. Jordan to be Zayden right I now. I am at this point. I think just because I pictured him the whole time, so in my head he is my. This he is, is Zayden. insane. We need to change the subject. <laughs> no, let me finish really quick. Okay. Because in Black Panther, the ki- stop, <laughs> stop. The character he plays in Black Panther yeah. is Zayden. I don't One, know if you know. He's not as angry. It's not. <laughs> Okay, yeah, but like the, yeah, he can do the whole like mysterious kind of bad guy thing, mm-hmm. and that's kind of how Zayden guy. is, mo- like uh, at least halfway through this book. Yeah. So I, he's a very believable Zayden for me because of that character. We have to stop. All right, this is not. No. So, di- I'm assuming. Did you think he was gonna be this book's Reese? Yeah, then? absolutely. Okay, I figured. But um, except, I have a hard time saying. Is he this book's Reese? No one is Reese. No one is Reese. Reese. And actually, I I compared Dane and Tamlin a lot in the beginning of this book, and I compared Zayden and Reese a lot. And once I stopped doing that, I enjoyed the book a lot more too. Same here, and that's where I was going with that. Is it comparing it? We couldn't help it because we were just talking about Akatar and it's like heavily. Not even just talking about about each other. Yeah, they're both like huge books right now in the fantasy. Um, but it. I, it was hard. Like I, it was hard. It, I feel it was hard for me to initially, but once I did, I yeah. enjoyed, I like both stories more mm-hmm. because they have similar qualities, I but they're like not it as the much same. because I was comparing it to Akatar. So I was like, it's not as good. It's not as good. Everything I was reading, it's not as good. And so once I stopped, I was like, this book is excellent and I need to yeah slap myself back. To I reality. never thought it wasn't as good. I just like, <laughs> I, I think I was kind of in my mind changing the characters mm-hmm. a little bit. Like, 
like um don't get me wrong like dane and tamlin have similar char- characteristic why did i say that three times they have similar characteristics um they're both like crazy overprotective and stuff but it without getting like two in the weeds like it comes from different motives Mm -hmm. and so I didn't if I had pictured Dane being Tamlin too much like it was I I I don't I don't want to get too out we can talk about it in a second but like I don't know I just I disliked their characters for different reasons and it didn't fit with the storyline yeah um um but anyways she goes across the parapet she starts it's raining yeah she meets Rhiannon in line and dylan dylan talks about how he has got a girl back home tell me why this part actually this made, got me i didn't cry throughout this whole book even the really emotional parts this made me cry this was because he's so innocent it was, it was so shocking sad. too it was the fact that they gave him a future exactly and then she took knows it away really <laughs> <laughs> took it away it to me within yeah. three pages i know and just it was so it was so quick it was like and there he goes well and i i i mean mira said don't make any friends and then like right off the bat she makes two friends and so i was picturing like okay these are gonna that be her buddies that would not be a hard instruction for me to follow <laughs> you got it <laughs> these <laughs> these are gonna be her buddies throughout yeah. college like her war training like nope. and then dylan was not and it was just that like it's such an when people die in biscaya it's such an informal death it's a, a quick yes. rock and you burn their things i know sad so when she was like there's just another name it was it was so sad yeah but she gets across jack barlow oh, wow. mm-hmm. Ugh. Um, is like for just be I, and I uh, I don't know I guess this is the one part I had a hard time following but probably because I don't have bullies. N- no, <laughs> I was gonna say I don't have any kind of understanding on like the how the family being so prominent like uh-huh. I don't have any like personal experience with that, but like how he literally just hated her like w- not just hated her like literally wanted to kill her the yeah. second he found out what her last name was, like yeah. for no reason other than that like all of a sudden she deserved and the craziest thing is he wasn't even a marked yeah, yeah he wasn't even one of the, uh, the marked separatist. ones the separatists yeah. like so other than I just like that too like it is really weird because i feel like everyone would want to help a soaring gale to improve their status since the general is you'd a think like you get in their good graces yeah. but no like no he, he j- wanted to kill her so quick yeah i don't know he was such a brute bully from the beginning not a fan i mean a fan of like the enemy but like yeah. not obviously i mean she did a good job at writing yeah. someone you hate yeah like which i like i like when people can like really gather a group together to hate someone <laughs> agreed that's like a i'm impressed way by to go that. rebecca <laughs> <laughs> um but if so immediately she gets across yep. I, I did like that because she seemed really i mean wait what do you think about her trading shoes with that was Rain? sweet I liked that. I liked I, it. Spoke so much to her character right off the bat. Yeah, mm-hmm. I and I and I kind of got that vibe from her. But then when mm-hmm. she did that, I was like, I'm gonna like this girl. Yeah. Um, but I once she gets across, and I was skeptical of Rihanna at first. I'm not gonna. I, I said this before. I'm skeptical of all. I know. Initial. You're skeptical of everyone. I am because I've been so burned by Sarah J. Moss. <laughs> been so hurt. <laughs> so I am skeptical of everyone. Uh huh. But um right after when jack chases her across or whatever i love that because i mean we even talked about how badly she hurt her knee and ever she just seems kind of frail and weak mm-hmm. and then she just literally like sticks it to him yeah. right her dagger right in the balls yeah it's like don't like you have to stop it was i loved that i, I was like okay like she's gonna be a lot feistier than i was expecting exactly. i was like okay she has some fight in her because the whole time she's like i'm running i'm like i'm crying i'm running and yeah. my knee. i'm reciting history to ground myself and then like. she turns around and has a knife in his balls i loved it i know it was good um so then after that dial dial it that's their dane and violet it's their couple mm-hmm. name violet runs to dane almost immediately after crossing the parapet uh-huh. and he takes her to his room to wrap her knee what was your first impression of dane though it's like he was shocked when he saw her he was kind of dismissive to Rhiannon, and then he, like, pulls her away. I'm going to be so honest. Uh, I wasn't a fan of him from the beginning, but I also just – I knew I that know. this book would go there, so I, I didn't get attached. I wasn't either – yeah, I agree. Never get attached. <laughs> I wasn't either because some things – But it's my fault. I mean, we made the choice to wait this long to read it, so – Idiots. I'm not mad that things, some things were spoiled because yeah. – 
it's my own doing. Yeah. But, like, I knew that I probably wasn't going to like Dane. Yeah. <laughs> I had seen that people had compared him to Tamlin. So, I think I, everything he did, I was comparing to, like, how Tamlin acted in the beginning and, like, yeah. all that kind of stuff. So, I really did myself a disservice there. No, I immediately... It's like if you read Actar twice, right? Like the first time you're like, oh, Tamlin, he's amazing. Then the second time you're like, <laughs> like I can't believe she fell for that. So <laughs> I kind of went into this almost feeling like I had read it twice. So I'm True. I'm like, okay, I already know she's not going to end up picking Dane. So what is every flaw I can see in him? Yeah. And that's how I approach this, which he had a lot. Oh, yes. Um, But then he like right from the get-go, he's just like constantly being like, you can't do this. Like, let's escape. And that felt very Tamlin. That's my biggest thing. To me. So the Tamlin comparison is hard because Tamlin was overprotective and overbearing and possessive. His big things, he's so possessive. Yeah. I didn't feel like Dane was necessarily possessive. He was in some ways, but he, he felt was dismissive. Constantly doubting her yeah. and making her lesser than and just yes. being like, You can't you can't do it. Sorry. You're so yeah. tiny. And you, like she's never doing do all these things and he's I mean, as yeah. the book goes on, she's like constantly showing that she can yeah. make it and he's always and he's there to like, chop her I can back get down. you out of here don't worry and yeah it's like let let her live let yeah. her fly but like and it was weird like i didn't like the are they romantic are they not mm-hmm. like it, that like he kept going back and forth too like yeah. which i was like pick one yeah like either be into her or don't be into her but don't like you don't like kind of talk about the girl that you were seeing last year and then but be like, but I know how I feel about you. Yeah. Like, Pick are you know? I know. So when Dane and sub- subsequently Violet's squad was moved to the fourth wing, mm-hmm. the name of the book <laughs> really clicked for me. And that made me love the book even more because of how clever it was. Like, yeah, I don't know. I'm not. I, I, a Court of Thorns and Roses. I'm like, yeah, whatever. But like, there was never a point in the book where they referenced thorns and you know what I mean? Like, it was a metaphor and I get it. But there was never... It was not a metaphor. It was a description of the spring court. Same as Mist and Fury is the description of the night court. Yes, but it's very... Okay. Wings and Ruin is a description of the war. But it's a metaphor for the war. Ma'am. It is... It's not. It's a description of... But there's never a point in the book where they're like, and we're at the Wings and Ruin quadrant. Yeah, it's not literal. But that's what I'm saying. It's not a metaphor. (laughs) whatever you're right okay. okay you're right it's not a metaphor but it's not as direct as this was i love that they it's called fourth wing because yes. they were literally i in did the have one of these wing. moments yeah exactly <laughs> i'm reading and i'm like oh, i get it i get it <laughs> and like and i love that it just clicked into place so early yeah. on in the book well i didn't okay what i didn't love about the fourth wing <laughs> is that it wasn't the first wing <laughs> like yeah I, I want her to be the best of the best of the best i don't think the numbers of the wings had anything to do with how good they were though i know but i just don't care i want her to be <laughs> number one of number one <laughs> just so number one that nothing. i was like why mm, okay what did kind of confuse me a little bit and I, again i think this is just like my very limited understanding of military was so there was four wings but then there was like multiple squads within the wing like there was Ugh, fire three flame, and three and, claw, th- yeah. and talon right or mm-hmm. I don't know. And then underneath those, there were squads. So she was like fourth, w- second, second squad, squad, fourth wing fl- flame or something. something like that. I did get confused as well. But um, if that's... you're in the army, please explain to me. <laughs> or Jennifer. Because this wing is squad. made up. Thank this you. is made up. So I don't know <laughs> <laughs> if this is similar at Jennifer. all. But... Rebecca? Yep. Rebecca, please not Jennifer. I got you. Unless someone named Jennifer understands and can explain Jennifer, it, please, <laughs> please help us. Come out of the woodworks and help. <laughs> um, so Violet's first sparring lesson. Yes. Um, she's up against Imogen. Were yes. you expecting her to get as hurt as she did? Absolutely oh, not. This was the Shocking. most brutal <laughs> description of like a fight that they've had throughout the whole book. Well, it's very early on in the book, but like. I we knew that it, she gets hurt easily. It never got worse than this for me. Like I agreed. the shoulder snap, and the it's not just she dislocates her shoulder and breaks her arm. Like it was a lot of and like description. For, I think I underestimated how frail Violet was until yeah. this fight. Yeah, and we made it's still funny. I don't care how good the re, or like how the true or what the true reference is to this. We immediately the first thing I thought of was, and I know we made this real, 
was that guy in SpongeBob who was playing them, but he was like, every I have was born with glass bones and paper skin. Every night I break my arms, and every Monday night morning. I break my legs. <laughs> a heart attacks put me to sleep, and like or whatever. And it's just like, oh my gosh, like because they were going it's to con violent. him. Yeah, and it it's was... just like I've never understood how someone could get that hurt, and I was yeah. really surprised that the main girl in this book was gonna be. I mean we knew like Feyre couldn't read like every main female character has something that a hindrance of some or ailment of some sort hindrance in a like sparring challenges it's not even just it's not even just that it's like I don't see how could it, it could change yeah like you can learn to read like that's not if you don't know how to read you can figure it out it doesn't mean you're gonna be a scholar but you can Mm -hmm. learn to read in order to communicate and whatever yeah how is she gonna mend her like she can't she can't help that her no. bones dislocate easily so so i was like how I is this gonna like go this, and i was like okay so this girl is super weak and she's just throughout the book was super weak but yeah. then tell us what you discovered well yeah but then i learned that apparently rebecca yaros in real life has eds mm-hmm. which i can't remember how to say it but it's a real life like ailment where to your joints and your your it's a lot of things but like one of them is like really weak joints and muscles and ligaments and everything and you can get hurt easily mm-hmm. and also four of her kids have it too mm-hmm. and she wrote violet as this character because she hadn't seen a book where yeah the uh, main female character struggled in this way and i was like that's made me i didn't love it i agreed Excuse me. I agree. I didn't love it at first, but then when I learned about that, I was like, that just made it more real. Yeah, it gives you more perspective. And like you said in other episodes of ours, authors have to make people imperfect mm-hmm. in some way. They have to have flaws. Yeah. And I liked how, even though it's not for me, knowing that this is like a real issue that people deal with, yeah, it made it a relatable flaw. Mm-hmm. And anytime a character's relatable, you like them even more. It's true. So, I did like Violet more and more as the book went on. Yes, but I agree. At first, without knowing that, initially reading it, yeah. I was like, this is going to get annoying. Yeah. Because, and, uh, well, and I also was like, again, I focus on like the wrong things, the foreshadow. I was thinking, oh, this is going to have something to do with her signet power. Yeah. Like this is somehow going to manifest and to be her great gift later on. And I'm glad it didn't. Yeah. Like, I'm glad that it actually is just something that she had to deal with, like, yeah, for as, yeah, yeah. For as long as we know. I was, we'll move on. We'll, yeah. we'll come back to that. Um, <clears throat> so then lots of things happen in between. Um, Dan- okay, really quick, though, she goes to the healer and then a mender to, I wish we had menders in real life. Let me just say. Yeah. I mean, Be I guess nice. we have surgeons and I guess that's kind of the same thing, but I wish it was magic. Um, Dane is trying to be like, don't mend her. We can use this as an excuse to get her out, a.k.a. leave I her in chain. I genuinely thought he had some ulterior motive when I read that. I was like, what's your angle, guy? I know, I'm guy? like, it, she's your best friend. I get you wanting to, like, get her out of here. Yeah. But, like, I don't understand I was actually really wanting surprised her to be in that pain. what he said was what it was, that he wanted her to have that as proof of she can't handle it, she needs to leave. I know. I thought he was, like secretly wanting to tear her down some ways honestly that's there's that's the only thing that that made more sense to me than what he actually was trying to do did it make sense to me is that violet was like just this once (laughs) just heal me this one time never again because i'll be seen as weak and i'm like you're gonna be seen as weak Weak if you're limping around yeah i know i agree i didn't really understand yeah i think that was probably more of like a she i mean she went to the healers so often that she like knows them yeah all um, I think it was maybe more of a personal thing. My tummy is rumbling. <laughs> Time for lunch. No. <laughs> no, maybe more of a personal thing. Um, yeah. But I don't know. I just was like. Agree to disagree, Violet Soringale. <laughs> um, so, yes. Yeah. Anyways, um, Violet is in the garden. She's learning. She's smart. And I love that she's smart. Mm-hmm. So she realizes she's not going to be able to 
beat people without a little edge hand yeah. to hand so she goes and gets some stuff to make some poisons she gets that book of brennan from mira who snuck it into her bag right or snuck her it into her, her bunk yeah um the book of brennan just gives her little tips and hints about how to survive within yeah. biscayeth in, yeah. in the writer's quadrant and so it's like hey if you want to find out who you're challenging like yep. the professor is pretty much here's here's where to find something. it yeah, yeah. And so she, nobody else knows who they're challenging, but she does. So she goes and poisons them every day. Oh, well, Which and that's I, why she signed up for lunch duty. Yeah. Because I'm like, this girl is, She's I smart. like the way she thinks things through. Yeah. And it's not illegal. She can do that. Yep. Because so. I like that she, she wasn't so, like, Dane is just so much about, like, he, By the, the codex. Books. Yeah. Or, like, or die, essentially. Yeah. So He's much so guy. that he won't actually it like works against him Mm -hmm. and whereas she does things by the rules until the rules interfere with like morality yeah then she's like well that that's not okay she's a very a moral compass yes whereas everyone else well dane doesn't codex yeah (laughs) then codex is his moral compass um anyways though she's out there though she's getting the things and she's in the tree and then all of a sudden zayden and then multiple other marked ones marked ones mm-hmm. um start gathering and she's like listening in yeah but, i mean she can't help it she's stuck up there <laughs> and she still thinks zayden wants to kill her yeah at this point we really haven't touched on that enough like that's like the one of the very first things he says to her is like because i'm gonna kill you because zayden's or violet's mom fought zayden's dad and, and killed ended him. up killing him but not before zayden's dad killed her brother right and all of this had to do with the apostasy where they yeah. uh rebelled against navarre yeah they yeah they Just, saw injustice they didn't really touch on like what the injustice was that but. i thought that was yeah i did think that was interesting on how they're just like yeah they just rebelled they're separatists they try to separate themselves but yeah. it's like no one asked why? but why yeah i was Does wondering why i want to know why <laughs> um but anyway so they're all there and they're according to the codex no more than three of them can gather in a place at once which i I was like, there has to be more than this to this too, because other than really, you caught on to that. Well, yeah, because I'm like, other than not wanting to, I didn't catch on to that. I thought it was just like, yeah, we don't congregate. Well, that's no where I'm loitering. like, other than to not like want have more people to in order to avoid creating uproar, like mm-hmm. stir more conflict. That's where I thought it was going. Yeah, but I was like, there has to be more. There has to be a an deeper reason to this um i didn't think but anyways there's more well more over three yeah of them gathering at this point um what did you think this was going to turn into when you're reading like she's stuck in the tree they're all i just thought they were gonna start telling secrets i was hoping didn't know what kind of secrets it was too early in the book for me and then i thought that i was hoping we'd find out that they're like still rebelling that was what i was hoping we'd find out but you're right it was way too early in the book yeah to for anything like that to have been revealed um but then violet comes down and it turns out zayden knew she was there because he's a shadow wielder yeah (laughs) um i love that i love that she can't hide from him do you think there is inspiration for absolutely that from asriel yes 100 percent. shadow daddy (laughs) (laughs) i know he'd hate that (laughs) um well yes <laughs> i don't know how to recover place. no yeah he 100 percent, and that's the thing it's like i don't i don't fall it's hard i think it w- it would have been I, there I no doubt in my mind that rebecca read the Agatar series yeah and with especially just like how well they're written and how much everyone loved them yeah there's no way she couldn't pull f- inspiration from that i do not think she copied it i think she did a really good job at doing writing something that the same fan base would fall in love with i have something to say on this but it has to come later okay but (sighs) i it's impossible yeah not to also there's five books of five akatar books oh there's so much in there like sjm doesn't own the right to shadows but she made them a thing though no she doesn't she doesn't are we sure we're sure we're not sure we're positive <laughs> <laughs> like you can't but like obviously people are gonna think yeah asriel when they hear shadows too and i like that but okay i'm not enough. gonna wait i'm just gonna say it <laughs> zayden wasn't as powerful as like haifei with his shadows we find that out when he's i mean he comes off super powerful within biscayeth 
um, within their duels and whatever. I just he's think, wing leader, obviously. He's I powerful. The, but the, the, it's not that. He is as powerful as he could be for humans. Mm-hmm. The dragons are the main power in this book. If we're comparing, and we are. Because he's not. We just need to he's like, just label this episode this. comparing Akatar and, and Fourth Wing. But I honestly, I'm going to say it. I didn't like this book as much because they, she really like, what's the word? Shirked, shorted their. Shirked? I don't know. I don't think that's a word. I don't think so either. Gypped? It came out loud. As I said it out loud, I don't think it's right. <laughs> but uh, she just kind of like shorted their powers. Like, they, Shirked. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> Reese, all powerful. Fair is ne- and, and it's coming from other people where they say like, oh, there's never been a more powerful high lord. He's the most powerful yeah. in Prithian, whatever. And then he proves it. He can miss people. He's just taking out like huge chunks of the army, whatever. But then Zayden, you know, there hasn't been a guy as powerful as Zayden in centuries. Well, when they're actually in battle, like he is constantly losing and getting beat up and stuff like that. No, no he is not. He is. First off, he's you can't compare them because I did. I just did. He's human. I know. And Reese isn't. I know. But if we're just Pause. I'm not done. Okay. He's human. Reese isn't. In this world, in the universe uh-huh. of Bezgaith and like the uh, Rebecca Yaros created. The dragons are the power. I have it's, more to say on that, too. Okay. They channel it into humans, but, like, the dragons are... And I, and I have a lot to say on this, too. I'm going to wait because I actually have a specific question for okay. it later. But there's nothing like that in Akatar. They are high faith. They are the power. They, they are, the are power. everything. You're right. This... Zayden isn't the power. Zayden has a powerful dragon, and Zayden is a – he's also incredibly oh, skilled. Yeah, we can, like, really break it down to that. But, he's incredibly but, skilled fighting, and that is mostly what they focus on, yeah. truly. Like – I just think they could have really upped his mojo. Like, he really could have been so much more powerful. I they, just think he has – I just like when they write people – In this world, he has all the mojo. <laughs> he is he is I mojo know. I think in she could have done more where, like – nothing can touch him he can protect whoever he wants that's just like, not he's realistic just so, this isn't realistic there Honestly, are dragons yeah well i didn't that was like actually my least favorite thing about reese though uh-huh. was that he was untouchable yes okay like the only thing that got to him was Feyre, and like there was a couple times where he was weakened or whatever but he couldn't even die like that's yeah like I don't know. I that was see that's my favorite too part unrealistic about Reese, though. So no, I like that this one like crossroads again. Mm, cultural differences. Cultural differences. <laughs> I like that Zayden was very strong. He knew exactly what he was but doing. He had limits. But he had his limitations because okay. it keeps you on your on the edge of your seat. I was never concerned. Yeah. That anything was gonna hurt Reese. Yeah. Okay. Like, but I. But I liked that for for me. I loved that. <laughs> But for me, <laughs> in my so, opinion, okay. let's let's keep going. Okay. Um, all right. So then, all of that happens in the um, thing. Well, I were you surprised though? Sorry, going back to the garden. Were you surprised that Violet agreed not to say anything, or did you think she would run and say something? No, I was not surprised. I, Mostly because I knew that they needed to end up together some way. They had to establish some kind of trust. So for so the sake of your story, <laughs> I wasn't surprised. If it was real life, I'd probably be surprised if a friend told me the person who wants to kill me. I had think this I was just surprised. And I said nothing. I think I think that's why I was just surprised. Is I had I wasn't even thinking so much in the. They obviously have to get together at some point, but I was thinking like, I don't know how she could keep. Again, mm-hmm. she's so by the book as much as possible. This is a clear violation of that. But she's like, but they weren't doing anything wrong. Like, she didn't hear anything. Yeah. He, Zayden was just trying to help all the first years. Yeah. He was just saying, you need to train with this person. You need, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. she respected that about him. And that's why her morality overrode the yeah. codex. Yeah, yeah, But um, then, then they're like, so when do we get to kill Violet Sorengale? And he goes, I like that he just said, I'll handle her. Yeah. Because it's very ominous. I knew what that <laughs> meant. But if you didn't know, it totally seems like he meant handle he the killing. Ki- yeah. <laughs> but even still, she still thinks he wants to kill her. Mm-hmm. So I was surprised that she wasn't putting her self, self-preservation over mm-hmm. I anything. did like to, um, moving 
forward a little bit how when Zayden saw Violet and like confronted her about like are you gonna tell her whatever yeah um they bring up Jack Barlow and he was like you should intimidate yes. him that's what I was gonna bring Whereas up next Dane was like you need stay to stay far away well, don't so that go happens, near him that happens right after because she does she throws the dagger mm-hmm. in this conversation is when she throws the dagger which gives you that comparison of Dane like okay Tamlin and Reese I yeah, have to do it Dane's like uh second guessing her and diminishing just who she doesn't is doesn't even think she can handle and Zayden herself. is like empowering her so yeah. I like that same way how Tamlin was like mm-hmm. no it's too dangerous you can't come on rides with me in the when I'm just I don't even know if I'm gonna find the bogey but I'm just looking for it you can't come too too much whereas Reese was like yeah you can be high lady mm-hmm. and you can fight in the wars I don't love it I don't want anything to hurt with to hurt you but I'm never gonna stop you yeah I, that we love that that was an easy comparison we like empowering it's good um, so that actually, that was my next question. So I'm okay. glad we touched on that. <laughs> um, after she chose to go with Zayden's advice, though, and Dane, she did she did the dagger thing with him, and then Dane became like angry. Mm-hmm. What did you think about his reaction? Same thing, just yeah. like like let's not. <laughs> I was like, dude, you're hot and cold. Yeah. Like, do you you're mad at her for standing up for herself? And then you keep telling her she can't stand up well, for herself. Well, he's like, lay low, lay low. She's like the most noteworthy person at this entire she cannot, school at this point. She, she there is not a low. low enough for her to go. <laughs> no. So not, She has longer hair than everyone. It's yeah. silver. She's short. She's a soaring gale. Nothing about her is lay low. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, so then Violet was on a roll with poisoning her opponents until one became sick. She missed the timing of it. Mm-hmm. They became sick too soon, so they couldn't even show up to the sparring ring. And Zayden volunteers mm-hmm. to fight with her. What did you think about the public fighting lesson that he gave her? Um, well, I didn't realize it was going to be a lesson. So at first, she I didn't like, realize it was going to be a lesson. He's a killer, exactly. Um, but it was cute. I loved it. Yeah, I love that she forgot that they weren't alone. Yeah, because con- that's a constant theme for her, and I like that. Me too. Mm-hmm. And actually, you know what I love about the story was that. She kind of denied her attraction for him in the beginning, but pretty early on in the book, she kind of just accepted it. And I love that it was not like a, like, I think Feyre denied it for so long Mm -hmm. and Reese was always there, but we, we didn't hear his side of things until later (coughs) chapter 55 or 54 to be specific. Um, but like, I like that first off, she was the one pursuing him and that she just never denied it. She tried to fight it. But once she accepted yes. it, she was like, this is just it. That's one thing that I like about this book yeah. that I do like is there are no it's miscommunication a... tropes. Yes. She's very straightforward with what she feels. Yes. And she's like, there's no time to beat around the bush. Honestly, so miscommunication is, is. is my, we've least talked favorite. about it. One Miscommunication and pregnancy are my absolute two oh, least favorite tropes. I would take pregnancy 10 times over Me miscommunication. Too. Me too. I'm just like. It ruins it, but it doesn't, it ruins the characters, not the story. I saw something online, this or like a reel where this guy was talking about like characters who make their lives a thousand times worse because they don't communicate and it was a doctor that was like you have cancer you have six months to live and the guy was like oh and then he it's like a thing of him back at home and his wife's like hey are you okay and he's like i'm fine and i'm like oh i'm already mad watching this she's like how'd the doctor's visit go good he said it was good yeah okay I know. No, I agree. I love, and I just, yeah, it was just like, it was never a question. It was like, this is how it is. And then it's like, how are we, how is this going to end up? Mm -hmm. Because we know how she's feeling and she's very like upfront about it. There's like a tiny bit where they kind of like tease each other, but that even felt different because it was like, it's, it was more like, who's going to make the first move. It's not like, well, maybe he's, maybe he doesn't, which she has like very fleeting thoughts of, but it was never long enough for it to matter. Yeah. Um, so then one of her squad mates accuses Violet of sleeping with Dane while they were surveying the gauntlet. I liked this scene for a really weird reason. Every time this happens in any book or movie, it's like this just adds fuel to the fire. But the fact that Rhiannon was like, don't you know that they've been friends forever and they're not yep. sleeping together? And th- it was so like accepted. They were like, oh, my bad. Sorry. Uh, and I, yeah. And I'm like, when um, has that ever been accepted? They would continue on with the, okay, sure, and yeah. like have rumors. But the fact that they were like, I'm going to be respectful. Well, I sure. think it's because there's no way to argue that. It's not like, come on, they're just really close. Oh, yeah, I'm sure they're really close in bed. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, but, like, they've been friends since they were five. It's like, all right. 
yeah that's a fact like canceled out. they were like okay but i i did like that because i don't know if we're gonna compare Feyre. um fair went from high lord to another high lord to maybe tarquins and back to it was like really weird and <laughs> yeah. it was like girl even you though it's like you're hopping well but even homie hopping even the tarquin though like we know it was fake yeah but, but to anyone else to en- it, it didn't look weird. fake yeah with this i like that that was shut down she's like no we were never together and they actually weren't ever together like i know he kissed oh <laughs> I mean, we're about to talk about it. We'll talk about it. <laughs> he kissed her once, but then, like, she overall chose Zayden. She wanted Zayden. It was, so. yeah, she, well, I mean, she <clears throat> thought she wanted Dane. Yeah. In the beginning. She had wanted him for a long time. Yeah. Her friend. But, but they then, never acted on it. Well, and I love how Dane, in the beginning of this, says, like, this place strips a, everything away who you are and you see, like, the real person. Mm-hmm. I love that that backfired on him. Yeah. Because he was talking about Zayden. Yeah. And, like, and even just, like, her like but being, she saw him well, and she saw herself <laughs> well but he also was talking about her like he meant it in like a this takes away like you're gonna realize how weak you are here yeah. like you can't and you're gonna realize you can't do this when in reality she found out how strong she was she did and also it broke away everything she thought she knew about him she thought she loved him she thought he was her best friend yeah but really he is a, not he's a slithery little snakey snake <laughs> <laughs> um Okay, without jumping too much ahead again. Um, Zayden gives Violet the advice that the correct way isn't the only way when approaching the gauntlet. Did you see that foreshadowing more than just this obstacle? No. Just Absolutely, I did. Okay, the whole book has been talking about Why how she's... mad at me? Because... I'm just telling... I'm just a girl. <laughs> I'm just a girl. <laughs> no, because the whole thing is... This um, story is a dog about how she's too small. She's... Yeah. Her hair's too long. Like, everything about her okay. is wrong. Yeah. And how he goes the correct way is the only way. That's absolutely, to me, was foreshadowing that she's going to overcome everything mm-hmm. in her own way. Okay. No one's going to appreciate it, and they might even say she's doing it wrong, Good but take. she's going to live and do it. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, for me, it was just the the gauntlet situation, and I liked how she handled that with the knife and all that. And then I loved... Ta- we'll come back. We'll come back. We'll come back. <laughs> yes. So, let's talk about the threshing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Did you expect her to bond with two No, this dragons? is my favorite part of the book. Um, no, I didn't. I loved how noble she was going after Indana yes. to to save her from Jack. Tynan and Jack Tynan, and Tynan, Jack, and Orin. Orin, yes. yes. Um, I loved the fight between them. I love that Zayden was ready to step in and even made a step. Even though he couldn't. Even though he couldn't. And I love that Jack ran away after yeah. she threw the blade in his shoulder. Yes. Um. I was mad that she wasn't going for kill shots. I was mad this whole book that she wasn't going for kill but shots. But it, like, speaks to her character. Yeah, we get it. Don't like it. I get it. I liked it. But, um... Actually, so, I did so like it. I thought she was going to bond with Andarna. The, yeah, me too. Because And then I was like, ugh, dumb, because... Of, and I was like, the small girl, small know, dragon, of course. Like, dumb, because she's not going to be respected. This is going to be up well, the battle. Well, and my thought, was, my thought was, like, okay, everyone... Because I was like, absolutely, there's no way she doesn't bond with this dragon yeah. after saving it. And then I was like, well, maybe this is like a facade like everyone sees this dragon but then she's gonna turn into like this oh. big cool rare dragon that no one's ever seen yeah. before and i'm glad that that's not what but happened. they foreshadowed that um the black the, taren the, yeah taren was tank yeah taren was going to be part of this um but he wasn't bonding that year he was just like within the veil or something so they well, foreshadowed I didn't even that they think, saw him yeah I was, yeah they just saw him for and the first then time the feather tail they uh, again Garna, foreshadowed, they that, foreshadowed they, that well they didn't the, they just said feather tails never bond yeah and that they're not known but for that, being that in there battle was one yeah it was kind of like scoping it out. and just so being curious everyone that was really neat because i didn't i thought oh then she's for sure gonna bond the big one and then when they brought up the feather tail i was like oh never mind she's gonna bond the feather tail and so i was bummed but when Tarn lands, oh my gosh! It was my favorite part of the whole book. It I was loved, and honestly, okay, <laughs> I loved it. When our, Taylor, my friend, that is like so good <laughs> after reading like two pages of a book and guessing mm-hmm. whatever happens, she texts. So I, I had, I was almost to this part in the book. Mm-hmm. She texts me four. She's like, these are my unhinged thoughts on what happens. And one of them was that Violet's going to bond with multiple dragons. Mm -hmm. And I even, I was talking about that one. I, because I had, I think I was in the part of reading where she's protecting Andarna. Mm -hmm. I literally go, oh my gosh. I was like, you're, you're crazy. Ha ha. One of those absolutely doesn't happen. I can tell you right now. Why? And like, 
three pages later so bold well i i was where reading you, this where get the we, nerve <laughs> who do you who think, you think you are, are? <laughs> and that is exactly i'm never this is why i'm just like taylor i didn't tell her because I, well, I didn't want to ruin it for her yeah but i was well except she already knew apparently apparently but i was just like you are so crazy i was like stop doing this like how she hadn't even gotten to the parapet yet Oh. Or I think she had just passed that part in the book. That's so odd. That's why I'm like, how do you that's even? Really good. How do you even assume that something like that's gonna happen? I'm glad nobody does that to me. I get so. <laughs> I'm sorry I do that to you sometimes. It's I okay. get so angry. I have multiple when people, people doing it to me. So spoil anything in a book for me because well, books here's the are thing. so much harder than movies. I am working so hard yeah. to read this. There's a lot of effort. Well, mentally, it's mostly just time too. Time, all that. So then for someone to be like, oh, did you like this? Well, Bye. But- it not was, friends um, anymore don't do that to me i do that to you a lot so okay I'm sorry ellie did that to me actually during this book i had i she was a handful of chapters ahead of me and i was like ellie i just got to tell you what just happened she bonded two dragons i can't even believe it and she goes yeah i know and can you even believe that the dragons are mates with zaydens i was like i didn't say mates with zayden i said that the dragons are mated but i did say segale and Tan, yeah, yeah, yeah so i can't believe taryn and segale are mates and i'm like what yeah which... <laughs> and then and but here's my favorite part you were like oh well it happens in like the next page get over it <laughs> i was like i <laughs> so rude <laughs> from the bottom of my heart i don't my believe bad. you <laughs> <laughs> okay so then that leads us to the fact that taryn and segale are mated yes um so first they say oh violet who did you bond with what dragon and she taryn gives his full name and then she tells the person, like, oh, my dragon's Taryn. And then Indarna comes in and goes, and Indarna. And yeah. I picture her voice so high-pitched. Like, okay. Indarna. That's, so I did listen to the audiobook for uh-huh. this part. And actually, there were things I loved about the audiobook and there were things I hated. The same narrator yeah. had to do all these different voices. Mm-hmm. So, like, I hated the voice that she chose That's for Taryn. I struggle with audiobooks for a first-time read because I... It ruins things for me yeah, when they well, do things like that. I just did it because it's like, I have to get it done. Yeah. And I, I had a lot of things going on too. Yeah. So uh, I regret it. I'm not going to listen to the audiobook for the first time with Iron Flame, but mm-hmm. I will maybe go back and do it. Um, but um, I <laughs> loved the voice that she used for Andarna. It was it very much. It oh, was, was like, cute. Yeah. It was like, Andarna. That's Aww, exactly how yeah. she sounded. That's and I'm like I that. It. I, it, and I even picture because, I mean, the way they explain in the book, she's, like, the same size as Violet. Yeah. Like, she's not... She's I picture tiny. her, like, Littlefoot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I actually pictured... Um, <laughs> I... No joke. I pictured the Land Before Time, too, but... Uh, the... Ducky. Yes. I was, yeah. The Triceratops. Yeah. Yep. No, no, no. Not the tiny one in the water. Oh, you right. Yeah. I pictured Sarah. Sarah. Oh. Sarah's a jerk. Also, can we talk about how I was way older than I should have been when I realized they named her Sarah because she was a Triceratops? I was 28 just now <laughs> when I realized that. <laughs> okay, that makes me Ooh. feel better. Okay. Um, all right. So then one so, thing, though, we'll come back to the mating thing. Yes. One thing I really liked about this book was that the humans didn't really control, like, the dragons I, at all. I have something to say. I like how the fact that no two bonded two dragons had ever bonded with the same writer. It was yeah. up to the dragons to decide if that was going to happen or not, I not like the leadership. And I love, because I'm like, it's so unrealistic to assume, and I get, okay, again, back to Court of Thorns and Roses, like, they're not humans, they're fae, they have powers and stuff, but like, just, they control, like, all these monsters somehow mm-hmm. still, like, and I'm just like, these monsters are so much more powerful than them, how are they Okay, is still in charge? I, this is, I just like that it was like, we can try i have an unpopular opinion and here we go go might get a lot of backlash for this but i don't, <laughs> don't say it i'm gonna say it this book for this reason alone i think this is like what ruined a lot of it for me the dragons did not need the people that's why true. weren't the dragons oh, no. fighting this war on their own like the channeling and like the fact that you know they have um signets that's helpful sure the dragons had so much power. They didn't need people. Why are the people didn't do almost anything? And was, so for me, I felt like she should have written in more of a dependency that the dragons mm. needed the people more to survive. To that's do true. Because like if the rider die, well, but sometimes the bond's so strong that if the rider dies, the not the bond though. It's let's just say the bond's out of it. What are the people riding on the backs of these dragons doing? 
for the they're not controlling where the dragon goes they don't make the laws for the dragon the dragons don't need them to do anything the, when they were fighting the griffins the dragons were the ones fighting the people doing nothing i mean the people do sometimes they do things they're just so in sync <laughs> just a little though you're right you're right you're right they don't need them they needed more dependency for me to be like mm. this book was solid i just felt like they don't like even from reading from the threshing i was like why do we even need why do they need to be riding the dragons why aren't the dragons fighting this stuff on their own they obviously are um like they know enough to know yeah. like this war shouldn't be happening and who's the bad guy you know what but i had you I hadn't really thought about that. It doesn't change anything for yeah. me. It's but still a good book. I can see, I can understand why you would feel that way. Yeah. I I just liked that there was no pretending in this that humans would have any say over a dragon. Yeah. Like I feel like most, yeah, mo like okay, even Game of Thrones, like Khaleesi commanded them because they were she was her mom, like because she put the eggs in the fire. You know what I mean? Like she was the mother of dragons. She raised them, yeah. but I mean, like that's just the dragons could have incinerated her like in a heartbeat. They have loyalty. I'm just saying, maybe that's why these dragons they have loyalty. To I'm just the kidding. new rider. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just think I don't know. I'm just saying, like Jennifer, if you're out there, <laughs> explain this to me. <laughs> you mean Rebecca? No, Jennifer. Remember you said if there's a Jennifer, oh, then yes. explain that to us too. <laughs> I thought you were making fun of me because I no. said it wrong the first time. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I I don't know. I just liked that that it was realistic. Like, it's unrealistic, obviously, in the grand scheme yeah. of things. But this element of it, I was like, I like that that's different. Because yeah. any other book with dragons, the humans are in control. And that's just not the case. Yeah. House of Dragon. I mean, like, that's just, like, not, it's not how yeah. it would be. So, but, so yeah. This, um, this messed me up. So then Dane, Dane was annoying, but Dane started to really piss me off at this point in the book when he was trying so hard She'd to get her to choose. She'd already through everything. I know. And I'm like, uh, Taryn chose her. Yeah. She didn't choose him. He chose her. So I'm like, now, they, he still has so little faith. This beast, the biggest dragon they had seen other than mm -hmm. General Melgren's ever, like, sees her as worthy as a writer and, and everything you don't and who you are still you? who are who how dare you who do you think you are i'll say that again like i'm just like get over it dude like stop yeah. being so wishy-washy and then stop being like and i can't remember did he kiss her after that um after they or was it before announced that? that she could have both dragons and he said violet you yes. get to keep both then and he kissed kissed her, her. And, and i was just like, like Oh my gosh! I'm like, get out of here. Yeah, boy, bye. Like yeah. this, this is annoying. <laughs> Wasn't good. And then that's when Violet realized I don't want Dane at all. I love that though. Mm -hmm. I love that it was like she kind of was like, even like even if it was she was getting annoyed with him and it even slightly less romantic, but she just still felt that like connection to him because of her mm -hmm. best friend. But after they kiss, she's like, it was there was nothing romantically. I am so over you, like instantly. Yeah. <laughs> We loved that for her. Um, so then when Dane later apologized for kissing her, but his reasoning was due to rules against physical relationships that disrupt the chain of command, mm -hmm. I wanted to rip out my hair. Because, again, we're going back and forth. Um, well, I was just like, like, you know when, okay, let's say you go on a date with someone and you were not having a good time and then they reach out and they're like, hey, I wasn't having a good time. Like, I think we should just stay friends. Yes. And you're like, oh, okay. Like, yeah. That's the, what that gave me. What do you mean you weren't having a good time? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you know what? That is accurate. That's 100%. Yeah. Well, but then this is, at this point, is when it really started to become easy for me to separate him and Tamlin because I'll give Tamlin props for one thing. At least he was consistent. You heard it here, folks. The only thing I'll ever give him props and for. And now he deserves a redemption. Arc. No, he does not. I still, you still said don't. It. Can't go back. <laughs> I did not say it. We all heard her say Tamlin deserves redemption arc. <laughs> it's on the internet. <laughs> um, no, I like. Did you th did the same thing? Like at this point, it was like okay, he's he's Dane. He's not Tamlin. Like, or yeah. were you or were you already there? No, I was already there. Okay, for me, it would, this is like them. when it happened. Yeah. Um. So then, what did you think of the scene where Violet was attacked in the room by the six slash seven? Well, six unbonded cadets, seven. Yeah. Um, I was shocked, actually. Because according to the codex, I didn't either. 
that was I should have because they, they don't bring it up for no reason. Yeah, they sh- they don't attack while uh, it's against the codex. Yeah, yeah. To, yeah. So I actually I will say I think it's kind of I I actually kind of thought it was interesting that they were pretty much allowed to kill people whenever. I loved where this went though. Well, yeah, but I I liked that like as a part of the school, like they yeah. could kind of do whatever. Yeah. Except when it came to. But I thought that was fair. Well. So I know that's what I'm sleep. saying. Yeah, I like that though. Like yeah. it was. I just, again, I, think I just, they have to have some moment where they can have a moment's peace in a day. Well, yeah, but I'm just saying, like, I like that it wasn't against a rule. It's not like we're gonna train you to be killers, but you can't kill any of these guys. Yeah. I, I kind of like that. It was like, don't die. Yeah. Like, game. but but again, like at least out. there was something yeah. where they could relax. But but yeah, um, what I did love about this situation is that one of the people that kind of allow well the person who opened up the door to violet's room was Autumn. one of the wing amber amber <laughs> i was, was close <laughs> very close was one of the wing leaders and so like you don't quite like one of the quotes on the top of the book is like you don't question a wing yes. leader because if y- if it's wrong like they've made best has made a serious error in judgment which is and if you're wrong you're dead you die yeah, yeah. so um violet didn't trust dane, dane. enough to tell him well that but she also didn't want him to see her no, no, ma- no but she just didn't even go to him and oh say yeah you're right this happened but she trusted zayden enough and she was like you're gonna think this is crazy and zayden without a shadow of a doubt took her word for it and just announced it to everyone that yeah he yeah because he didn't need proof he just was like i believe you went up and just was like amber did this we have an issue yep and she and she is a capital punishment executed. yeah, yeah. And, she, and here's she six dragons killed. oh how do you feel about like the dra- like the morning the dragon mourning amber's death amber's bonded dragon oh, that was so sad i was sad for me too that, i didn't like amber but that was really sad the dragon was an innocent bystander in this and that was and they, well they had three years together because she was <gasps> yes. the third year that's what i was saying yeah, yeah, yeah. so she has like three years with this dragon and the dragon didn't do anything wrong but the dragon's suffering because their bond yeah. is broken and i mean hopefully i love the bond that, wasn't though. strong enough the, though like, that the dragon suffered too long two things we didn't talk about one i love the quad like mating situation where <laughs> segales made it to taryn who's bonded to violet segales bonded to Zayden. Zayden. and so by a chain of events if any of them die all of them die. i know i actually love that too intense because it's there's a lot at stake yeah. it made it high high stake high reward kind of yeah. Um, and so, and then that makes all four of them the most powerful riders. Well, and I loved that, um, Zayden, I mean, we still don't know his like point of view or anything yet, but mm-hmm. like, even if he doesn't necessarily want to kill Violet anymore, cause like he's had at this point, he's had so many chances or yeah. whatever. He still doesn't act like he likes her at all. Right. And I like that it wasn't like an instant, like, well, our dragons are bonded and, now I feel something for you. You know what I mean? Like, I like that it wasn't instant like that Mm -hmm. and that he still had to grapple with needing her to stay alive, Uh but also, like, not wanting to be near her. Yeah. And, like, he had to find that balance. Well, we thought he didn't want to be near her. (laughs) But, like, having to find that balance, too. And I I loved the rider dragon, just, like, in general, the bond and how that works. So that if the dragon dies the rider immediately dies because I they know. can't live without their dragon they the bond's too strong but then if the rider dies if the bond was deep enough it could kill the dragon but most likely a dragon would be okay enough to have another rider but then like each bond i thought it was everybody gets deeper and deeper so like yeah you it can't gets have harder more than three or four riders yeah you'll, the dragon will die i thought it was i did think it was kind of interesting that pretty much all the dragons had had multiple, multiple. riders we find this out later in the book but like Sigale chose zayden because she was bonded to his grandpa mm-hmm. like originally and i was like oh that's so it's like it's not but it's almost like a family heirloom yeah. <laughs> like i just like that like it was yeah she saw something in him because of a past mm-hmm. person well that's what he thinks not that Sigales confirmed that and True. i think that that's going to be a big confirmation of like well, he i sa- didn't choose you because of that he I said that's part of the reason she chose him though yeah. he said that like pretty matter of fact it wasn't he didn't say she loved him I so much, and that's why. Scales you're right. Mouth. I also want to hear it from. I want to hear it from Sigil's thoughts. 
I like Sigil. <laughs> She's probably my favorite dragon. Well, uh, Taren and Indarna and all the rest. <laughs> <laughs> I love, <laughs> they're all my favorite dragons. I, I accept the one that chose Jack. Yeah. I don't know how anyone could look inside that mind. scorched during that walk. Let me tell you. Let me, let me tell you. So, yeah. um, that's where we're ending. Oh. Here. Okay. We got a little further than I thought. I was, I'm like ready to keep going. Like, but that's the end of chapter 20. Really? Love it. Yeah. This book's really good. Oh my gosh. Till this, the end for me. D- stop. We'll no. talk about it on the next one. I will not be silent. <laughs> I will not be silent. <laughs> oh man, it's so good. I love, I love that. I knew I'd like this book, and but I thought I would not be as obsessed with it because of some things that were kind of like ruined, I guess, for yeah. me. But na- like, honestly, I don't think. I think I would have, other than it being like confirmed, I think I would have been just as been like this is happening like Mm -hmm. going into it because of reading Akatar even if like it wasn't like I the original person you think is in the love interest I've learned is never the love interest yeah it's never like it's they're always setting you up for failure with that one so immediately and especially anytime someone is explained as the most handsome person I've ever seen it's gonna be that's gotta be it you can't say that about one person and end up with someone else I feel like my heart always does the same thing I always am like on reserve like Oh, well, that was a nice thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. I don't think it actually... And I I had... I s- stayed away from most everything. Yeah. Like, fourth wing related because I wanted to keep spoilers to a minimum. Mm-hmm. And I did a very good job because I was not expecting the book to be, like, about a military, like, school, like, mm-hmm. S kind of. And, um, yeah, it was... I love this book so much more than I thought it was going to because I thought I had ruined like enough of it had been ruined yeah and it was not it was still good it was still good yeah yep. so excited for part two next week um like subscribe we got to start doing that in the beginning I keep forgetting yeah, it's okay <laughs> um but follow us on Instagram yeah on five Apple stars podcast or Spotify, Spotify. podcast um yeah follow us subscribe on youtube follow us on instagram if you don't already we post funny things too if you don't in my humble opinion hilarious things (laughs) well i mean there are some other people that agree with us too where our posted the that reel like we were talking about of violet and the comments are popping i know right now with um, some intense some people are angry with each other (laughs) i love it i i'm just sitting here we're like reading the comments like with popcorn yeah. <laughs> like oh my gosh <laughs> so, so it's yeah. fun it come hang out on instagram if you want to have a good time yeah <laughs> other than that have a great week see you next week bye